Bringing up a situation that probably shouldn't be discussed too much right now. If you did what you're suggesting, there would have been no difference three days ago. And you might not have had that very brave person who happened to have a gun or a rifle in his truck go out and shoot him and hit him and neutralize him. If he didn't have a gun, instead of having 26 dead, he would have had hundreds more dead. The president can't seem to escape from the domestic problems while he's on that trip. And while he was asked about the massacre, his focus was North Korea. And let's get to Ivan Watson for more on that in Seoul. Ivan, just a few months ago, the Trump administration was saying the time for talk is over. Now Mr. Trump is saying that he wants to make a deal with North Korea. Does that suggest a change in strategy? Help. Perhaps, you know, in his words, he was keeping his cards close to his, his chest. Uh, but when he was also pressed today at this press conference about whether he'd be willing to talk, he, he avoided answering that question. Uh, his counterpart, the South Korean president, Moon Jae-in, he uh, was somebody who campaigned on a platform uh, for his election back in May uh, of dialogue with North Korea. Uh, it shows how, how kind of both leaders have, have had to shift somewhat their approach to North Korea. The South Korean president instead today was standing side by side with President Trump and talking about needing sanctions and more pressure, uh, more rotations of U.S. military assets through the region, the acquisition of weapons from the U.S. Uh, he was talking about that instead and, and saying that he would hope that that combined effort would bring North Korea to the negotiating table. Take a listen to what more the South Korean president had to say. We are trying to bring a solution to the nuclear problem, DPRK nuclear problem, and to bring permanent peace on the Korean Peninsula. And uh, moreover, we would like to uh, promote uh, peace, uh, stability, uh, and uh, prosperity of the Northeast Asian region. So we would like to expand our diplomatic efforts in this regard. And uh, that should include uh, our efforts uh, for China, as well as ASEAN and Russia and the EU. So President Trump also mentioned the fact that there are three U.S. aircraft carriers coming into the region as well as a U.S. nuclear sub. Uh, but added to that, instead of using bellicose statements like he's made in the past, that, that this should all be the use of force, uh, of course, something of last resort, a means of last resort. But here's part of the problem. North Korea stands by its position that its nuclear weapons are non-negotiable. It portrays the nuclear weapons as, as an existential uh, form of defense. I'm going to use another uh, example that's come from the North Korean state media in the last 24 hours. It describes the nuclear uh, treasured source of justice. So whether or not Pyongyang could ever be brought to the table to negotiate about possibly dismantling its, its nuclear weapons, Pyongyang still makes it clear that that is a non-starter. So it makes you wonder how, how you could possibly ever get to that point with the neighbor to the north of South Korea holding such an intransigent position uh, about its nuclear arsenal. Linda. Yeah, you make a good point there. Ivan Watson for us in Seoul. Thank you very much. Well, we are covering President Trump's tour of Asia from across the region, even from places he won't be visiting. CNN is the only U.S. network in Pyongyang right now. And as our Will Ripley reports, North Korea is watching the president's trip to Seoul extremely closely. The coming hours really are critical here on the Korean Peninsula. The North Koreans say they will be watching very closely what President Trump says when he gives that major speech in South Korea before heading off to China. The Trump administration has been hinting in recent days that they may announce a decision about whether to put North Korea back on the list of state sponsors of terrorism, a list that North Korea was taken off of almost 10 years ago during discussions at that time, negotiations over North Korea's nuclear program. Uh, we know how that turned out. North Korea has a larger nuclear arsenal than they ever have and more advanced missile capabilities. But North Korean officials here are really doubling down on a promise made uh, just in the last month by North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un that they are going to round off their nuclear program to finalize uh, and perfect their capability of having a long-range intercontinental ballistic missile that could hit the mainland United States. And in order to do that, the North Koreans say they'll need to conduct more nuclear tests and more missile launches at a time and place of their choosing. In recent weeks, North Korea has threatened everything from an above 
above ground nuclear detonation to launching missiles toward the U.S. territory of Guam. Neither of those two things have happened, but it's noteworthy that North Korea hasn't ruled that out. Uh, the big question could a test uh, any sort of live fire event happen while President Trump is here in the region, and how would the Trump administration respond? We have heard a more conciliatory tone from President Trump speaking in South Korea, even talking about sitting down and making a deal with the North Koreans. But what the U.S. wants is denuclearization, and the North Koreans say their nukes are here to stay, and any talks about them giving up those weapons are really a non-starter for them. And they also say that the United States' actions don't necessarily match their words with major naval drills due to kick off in the coming days involving three U.S. aircraft carrier strike groups, something that North Korea says is intolerable and will justify, in their words, a very strong response and a strong message to President Trump. Will Ripley, CNN, Pyongyang, North Korea.